Hey everyone, it's Kenji. <clears throat> I'm here at home and I'm about to make um, Jacques Pepin's apple tart. Um, so this video, originally I was gonna do it for the um, the second season of the Jacques Pepin Foundation's video series, um, but apparently there are too many tarts in the video series already, so I'm gonna have to do something different. Um, but I thought, you know, I had all the ingredients, so I figured I'd just do it for my own channel anyway, um, and maybe it'll show up on the Jacques Pepin. Jacques Pepin Foundation site as well. Um, so this apple tart comes from his, um, one of his newer shows, maybe it's his newest show, um, Heart and Soul, uh, I think around 2015 or so. Um, but it's it's just Jacques cooking uh, some of his favorite simple dishes in the kitchen. Um, and this one he talks about how this tart, um, you know, the village baker would have leftover dough uh, from making bread and then they would take that leftover dough and bake it into this really simple, rustic apple tart. Um, and what he suggested doing was using just store-bought pizza dough instead. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Um, I've got, I got this store-bought pizza dough. Uh, he uses um, non-stick aluminum with sugar on it. I just did a, um, an aluminum pan with a little bit of oil and sugar over it. Um, started spreading out the dough and it's been sitting here probably for about Oh, 15, 20 minutes. Um, so you want to actually spread it out a little bit, let it rest about 15, 20 minutes, and then stretch it again because it'll um, relax as it rests. And you do want this dough to be nice and relaxed. Actually, I could probably go even a little bit more. It's a little bit cold in my kitchen today. But that's all right. This is a very forgiving recipe. One of the reasons I like this particular recipe is because... Um, you know, what makes Jacques Pepin such a great educator um, and, you know, and role model to me, I've watched him since I was a kid, um, is that, you know, he, he's done it all. He's, he's got boatloads of experience, um, uh, high end, you know, hotels, restaurants, all that stuff. He's done it all. Um, and yet, you know, he never, ever speaks down to people. Like he always, he always talks to people on their level, which I think is. A rare trait, a rare trait in um, you know very experienced chefs who can often be a little standoffish, um, or, or sometimes sometimes even snooty, of course. But um, you know Jacques Pepin, I think that's what makes him such a great educator is that he's never, never ever snooty. You never, you always feel like he'll respect you no matter what your decisions are, no matter what your cooking level, and that's kind of a rare thing. Um, all right. So I'm cutting these apples into little wedges like this. Um, Jacques Pepin does it into sort of, you know, triangular wedges. I just find this a little bit easier. But you can do them however you want. It's a super rustic tart, so you don't have to worry really too much about how you're cutting your apples. I personally find this to be the easiest way to core apples. Peel them, cut out the core, and then slice them. We might not even need all these. Um, so I'm using Golden Delicious apples here, which are what um, Jacques Pepin recommends. Um, and actually, um, I've done blind taste tests on apples and which apples make the best pies and tarts, um, as well as sort of documenting how well various apples um, will hold their shape. Um, and what you find is that there's a pretty much a direct correlation between how tart an apple is and how firm it'll stay after cooking. Um, so, and, and that's because um, pectin, which is sort of the carbohydrate glue that holds cell walls together, um, pectin is stronger at lower pHs, at, so at more in more acidic environments. Um, so <clears throat> the more acidic your apple, so like a Granny Smith, a really nice tart Granny Smith, um, is going to hold its shape really well when you bake it, whereas something sweet with not much tartness, like say a Red Delicious, is going to turn really mushy. Um, in my own testing, I found that Golden Delicious has sort of a, a perfect balance as far as apple flavor and ability to hold their shape. I think Golden Delicious are my, pretty much my sort of my go-to baking apples. What I use them if I'm making um, apple pie, apple tarts, baked apples, Golden Delicious is the way to go. But don't let that stop you from using other kinds. All right, so I'm gonna spread it out nice and rustic. <laughs> And then we're just gonna start shingling in our apples and you kinda push them in a little bit. And there's no need to be really precise here. Again, this is a super rustic tart, so um, it's totally fine if your apples are hastily shingled. Um, I'm leaving a little bit of a crust around the edge. Uh, 
Um, and now you're gonna see, once we're done with this, I'm gonna sprinkle it with some sugar. If you want, um, and again, this, it's not part of Pepin's recipe, and I don't think it's necessary, but if you want, you can always sprinkle it with you know, fresh nutmeg, cinnamon, um, whatever sort of spices you want. You could sprinkle it with a little vanilla. Um, and of course, you could also add other fruits to here. So like, I don't know, soaked raisins would be would be delicious, I think. You could do this with sort of a, a crisper um, nectarine when they're in season. You know, I'm not, not saying it's gonna pour juices everywhere. All right, I'll turn the rest of those apples into applesauce, I guess. Maybe we can wedge a few more in. Space for you guys. You go there. You can go there. All right. Save the rest of those. All right, so now I'm gonna take some sugar. Spread it over the top. Um, and this crust, I think I mentioned at the beginning, but there's sugar on the pan as well. Um, and that's sort of essential because you want the bottom crust to really caramelize. So, good amount of sugar, maybe like a third of a cup or so. We're gonna take some butter, just dot it all around. You can do this with store-bought pizza dough or you can do it with homemade pizza dough. So if I was gonna do homemade pizza dough, I would do around, probably around, if I, you want a pound, so I would say around 300 grams of flour, 200 grams of water, um, three grams of yeast, six grams of salt. Um, mix that all together, knead it a little bit, let it rest overnight at room temperature, covered on the countertop. Um, and then the next day, when you're ready to make your pizza, we'll ball it up, let it sit for a couple hours to uh, get its shape nicely and relax. When you're ready to do it, you spread it out on here, and then just do what I did, which is wait a little bit of time, spread it out again, put your apples on. All right, now this is going into a 350 degree oven with convection. If I wasn't using convection, I would go at 400 degrees uh, with no convection. Um, and that's gonna bake for about 45 minutes or so, so I'll be back in just about 45 minutes, so. Pizza galet, apple galets ready. Um, so this is actually pretty much exactly 45 minutes at 350 with, with convection. Um, and you'll see it's gonna get nicely caramelized along the bottom. Oh, if you can see that. Yeah. So you can let it cool on the sheet um, or you can do what I'm gonna do, which is just dig right in because I'm getting impatient, but, and I don't want, want to make you have to wait through the video. Um, all right. So the galettes here. The original recipe calls for apricot jam, which is a great gl glaze for sort of apple-y um, tarts like this, but I have this nectarine jam from, uh, we made this We made this last year when we lived in California and we got really good nectarines. Um, anyhow, this is, I had this in my pantry, so that's what I'm using. You can use apricot jam from the supermarket. You can use no jam if you don't want. But it does give it a sort of nice shiny appearance and the aroma is really nice so ideally you would let this cool um, on the pan stick this stick the spatula underneath it at the very beginning right when it comes out of the oven just to make sure that um, that caramel on the bottom isn't all sticking um, but then you would let it sort of release it let it sit back down and then let it cool on the pan maybe about 20 minutes so that it can firm up a little bit um, but we'll see how crusty this is. Maybe it's crisp enough that it'll, it'll hold a slice. Ooh, seems like it might. So you can cut it up just like pizza. You can also do sort of party cut, you know, cut it into squares if you have more people to serve or you want to do smaller servings. <laughs> this would obviously be great with ice cream be great with whipped cream oh yeah so you see how I don't know if you can see that here I'll flip it over you see how nice and caramelized and crusty that gets along the bottom a nice structure here 
Mm. That's real good. All right. There we have Jacques Pepin's pizza dough apple tart. Very, very easy and delicious. All right, guys, gals, non-binary non pals, I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.